Good morning, everybody from Great Falls, Montana. Our last day in the U.S. today. We're about uh, an hour or two or three, a couple of hours from the Canadian border. I haven't actually looked <laughs> how far away I am yet, but I know that we'll be in Canada in a couple of hours. We're crossing from Sweetgrass, Montana into Coots, Alberta. I'm just getting myself woke up here, getting the truck warmed up. It's pretty much all ready to go. This is my load. It's going into Banff, Alberta. We're going to be there tonight. We're going to stay somewhere around Canmore, Alberta, because I'm not allowed to stay overnight in the province or in the national park is what they're telling me. So I'll stay nearby and then tomorrow 7 a.m. We're getting the stuff off my trailer. And then I head back to Calgary, just like I thought. So they've got a reload for me there, uh, loading Monday, just north of Calgary in the town called Airdrie. And that's going back to Brandon, Manitoba. And from there, I'll probably head home. But let's let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Let's worry about today. I'm gonna go inside, grab a coffee. I'm at the pilot. And grab myself some breakfast, and some Java, and we'll be on the way. We're ready to rock and roll. Are you ready to rock and roll? My truck's ready to go, I'm ready to go. Are you? Trailer's coming with me. That's a good feeling. So I fueled up yesterday in Boulder, Montana. That was the cheapest fuel that I could find on my way up through Montana. It's actually a lot more expensive to buy fuel in Montana. And I thought that would be the opposite because Montana doesn't have sales tax, right? Like state tax. I thought maybe they do on fuel though. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But yeah, it was like uh, $3.59 per gallon or three fifty nine nine, dollars so three dollars a gallon, which equaled out in Canadian and in liters to $1.30 a liter. And down in, where was the last place I filled in? Uh, Utah? I paid like $1.17 a liter. What was that, like $3 and uh, it, was, it was a lot less. How do I get out of here? I don't know, I was just surprised. I thought Montana would be cheaper, but. Can I not get out this way? There's no driveway here. All right, we're just going for a loop. Just doing a loop. Seems like there should be a driveway here, right? No? I think there should be a driveway there. Well, there's a car going that way, so I know there's at least one driveway here. Ah, yes, this will work. This will work. Proceed to the highlighted route. I'm trying. Got to find how to get out of this place first. Canadian customs. Loaded trucks must stop. Well, I think everybody must stop. <laughs> Pretty sure we all have to stop at the border. So yeah, this is Canada, uh, from Sweetgrass, Montana, into Coots, Alberta. Let's see you on the other side. Beautiful Alberta. One of the best places in Canada. The guy at the window there, the border uh, officer. I wonder if he's watched one or two of my videos before, because he gave me a second look, like he kind of recognized me. And I don't cross through here ever. Like the last time I crossed through at Coots was, oh, years, I can't even remember. Five to 10 years ago, I don't know. So I wouldn't come up on their radar here as often, right? The guy took my, uh, I come up to the window, he looks at me and he looks back at me again. I give him my uh, passport and my paperwork. He looks at it, looks back at me, looks at it, looks at me. I mean, he could have just been trying to compare my face to my ID. Oh, and we got a scale that's open here. Well, you know, through that entire week that I was in the US, not one scale. Was, I got the bypass on every single scale. 900 feet, keep to the right on Highway 4. I get back into Canada, the first thing they want to know is, hey, how much did you eat while you were gone? How fat are you? <phone rings> you know, welcome home, Trucker Josh. We want to see how much did you eat. I know they got pretty big portions down there. You've been trying to lose weight. Road for 61 miles. No, Karen, they want to see how much I ate first. I did eat pretty good while I was down there. Had some really good food. 
We'll see if I'm too heavy for them now, if they're gonna be concerned, if they wanna see me a little closer. My load is definitely not overweight and all of my stickers and insurance are up to date, so there would be no reason to pull me in unless if they are worried about Continue something. Continue on this road for 61 miles. No, Karen, I told you, we gotta stop here first. The stop here for seed one scale deck is clear. Okay, so scale deck is clear. And they're saying move ahead, okay. So you're just supposed to stop there when there's a truck on the scale. So roll my window down so they can see my safety sticker. And I can hear them if they call me in. All right, here we go. Slow ahead. They're probably running my plates and my numbers right now, making sure that everything is legit. They're noticing that I'm not very heavy and that I didn't eat too much. I've been going on a walk every day. I only missed one day in this on this last week. And they're happy. They're sending me out. Right on. See? That's why you gotta exercise. Fort McCloyd, Alberta. This is where we're gonna do our walk today. I've got plenty of time to get up to uh, Banff. Uh, I've got all day today, and uh, I'm not too sure where I'm gonna go up to. I might just go up to the Petro Pass in Cochrane, Alberta. I know there's a truck stop in Canmore, I think, too, right? I might try to get up to there. It's into the mountains a little further, a little closer. Either way, doesn't matter really where I stop, because tomorrow all I gotta do, gotta wake up early and be at the resort for 7 a.m. And then uh, once I'm unloaded, I go back to Calgary. I'm gonna stay in Calgary over the weekend. I'm gonna go to the Flying J, probably in the south side of town, even though Airdrie, where I'm loading on Monday, is on the north side. Well, then again, I'll figure that out later, but <laughs> there is another Flying J sort of in central Calgary. But I might go to the southern southernmost one just because I like that parking lot better and I need to do laundry. I've been on the road for over a week now and I usually only take enough clothes with me for a week nowadays because I used to be on the road for three weeks at a time, right? And I had a lot more clothes with me then or I just do laundry on the weekends. Now I'm usually closer to home so I only have enough jeans to last me uh, like eight days, like one day past a week. So I'm, I'm out of clothes. I have one more pair of clean jeans and... Uh, I'm gonna wear those tomorrow. And then I've got no pants and I got lots of shirts, but no pants to wear for the way home. And I'm not gonna wear the same pants over and over every day. I wanna have a good presentation. You know, I don't wanna wear dirty clothes. When they get dirty, I change them. That's what I do. So, and when I shower, I put on clean clothes. I don't put on yesterday's clothes. You get it. So I, I gotta go find laundry somewhere. I don't do laundry on the road very often. I do have detergent with me just in case if stuff like this happens, but, uh, yeah, so South Calgary, I'll probably go there and then we'll be there tomorrow afternoon-ish, Saturday afternoon, and then we'll be there all day Sunday, and then Monday we go and uh, grab our load in Airdrie. We'll probably get a reset in then. But I know they have laundry at that Flying J, so I'll probably go there and do my laundry there and you know catch up on my videos. i got to edit a bunch of videos from this last trip down to Arizona, get those out to you guys. But anyways, enough yapping. Let's go do our walk. It takes about an hour for us to do our walk. I do three miles a day. 
Uh, it's, it's amazing how much better you feel when you get active. It's not like I'm running. I'm not running or jogging. I'm just taking it easy three miles a day. This is my goal until this is super easy until my body is so used to it that I walk three miles a day and I, I don't feel it the next day. So far, I, my body's adjusting pretty quickly right now, but I still wake up in the morning. I still tell I walk three miles a day before I'm a little tired, but I, I am sleeping very well, eating very well. So I'm going to wait and keep doing this every day until my body wakes up the next morning like it's nothing, like nothing happened. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jog the first half mile and walk the rest until my body gets used to that. And then I'm going to jog the first mile and walk the rest and keep adding an extra half mile of jogging on there every time my body gets used to that until I'm jogging the full three miles every day. That's That would be my goal. I would like to be able to run, I don't run, but jog three miles straight for people who jog every day and have been doing it for years and are in shape that's no problem for me that would be quite the achievement <laughs> being able to run right now i run for half a mile and i'm like woo i walk for three miles and I'm just whoo feel that the next day my goal is to be able to jog the full three miles every day wake up the next morning and feel great so i don't know how long that's going to take and it's going to we're starting this now, early spring, so that we can do this through the summer. And once winter hits, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll look at our financial situation. Maybe I can renew my my gym fit my gym membership, and then I'll just find gyms wherever I go, like I used to in the winter time, just to get on the treadmill, just to run. But uh, we'll worry about that for now. Let's use this summer uh, and take advantage of it. Let's get out there and uh, do our walk. Let's get our three miles in. All right, let's get going. Pretty warm day. I don't even know if I'll need my sweater. I'll take it along just in case. Uh, so what I use to keep track of my distance is Google uh, Google Fitness or Google Fit. It keeps track of that. Okay. All right. Let's take our keys. Got everything. Lock the doors. <clears throat> Just parked near uh, Dairy Queen here, and the RCMP station is right here, and Tim Hortons is right beside there. So when I get back, I can go get a Timmy's, because I haven't had a Timmy's in a week. There we go. I'm gonna stay right in the area here and uh, track my workout. All right. Press start. Oh, it gives me a little countdown. I'm kind of. There we go. All right. Let's go. I've never explored Fort McCoy. Some really nice homes over there. Just on the other side of that building now. I'm gonna check out this neighborhood. We're back to homes having lawns again. That's still so strange for me to see in New Mexico there, where they didn't have any lawn. Trees are turning green here now. Some of them anyway. Wow. Some nice homes. So on the north side of town here, I think I found a walking trail that'll lead us down to the river. Over there. No horses allowed on improved trails. No horses. <laughs> you know you're in Alberta when... <laughs> Leave your horse at home when you go to the park. We don't want your horse and all your horse poop in our parks. Everyone's got horses apparently. <laughs> yeah, we've got a decision to make here. What's this say? Historic Fort McCord, Edward Monsall Avenue, 7th. 
Edward or Ned Herbert Monsell, 1855 to 1923. Pioneer, rancher, businessman. Okay, so according to Google here, that sort of leads along the north edge of town, along the river, which is right behind these bush. Uh, and that leads into the bushes. Let's go this way. Let's see what adventure awaits us this way. Okay, so this is facing eastbound now. That there, according to Google again, is Old Man River. Cool. Oh, look, you can see it right through here. And then you can, yeah. Now that we're back in Canada, I don't gotta worry as much about you know, scorpions and rattlesnakes. Though I do believe Alberta still has some rattlesnakes though, right? We're just gonna say no and go with that. <laughs> and just stay away from the long grass. I want to see the river. Cool. Oh, that water looks so blue and clear. Okay. Russian pretty good right there. Wonder what this is here that they built out. Of course, if we're going to talk about Fort McCloyd, we have to show the, the fort. I believe this is the original fort where they stayed in. I don't think it's a recreation. Winnipeg has one like this too, uh, Fort Gibraltar. There was also a uh, Fort uh, Lower Gary. and. Lower Fort Gary and Upper Fort Gary. Must have been pretty cool back in their day. That was a good walk. 3.1 miles. Feel good. It's getting easier and easier every day. Got myself some Timmies and some uh, Timmies. Whoa. Whoa, let's not drop everything all over the place. Okay, I am ready. I am absolutely ready to rock. Let's go. We have another two and a half hours. We're gonna go to uh, a place just inside of, well, just before Banff, a little bit before, about 40 miles before there. There's a place called Bears Paw Kananaskis Travel Center. It's right by uh, Stony Nakoda Resort and Casino. We're gonna go and uh, park there for the night. That's about two and a half hours from here. Then tomorrow I'll have about 45 minutes from there into the national park to the resort where we where, uh, I'll get unloaded. Time to go.
had forgotten how beautiful the Canadian Rockies are. Every time you see them, you're just awestruck. Just, wow. We're going to go into them tomorrow. This next exit is mine. This is where we're going to stay for tonight. We're about 30 miles from Banff. We'll do that in the morning. That'll be some good scenery, some good footage.
was gonna be my supper, but I'll share some. Yeah, buddy. Hey, bud. There you go. Take care of yourself. I know you might be asking, why didn't you give him the whole slice? Well, that was my supper. That was, that was for me. I gave him part of it, like half of it. I need some too, I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh, now he's going to sit by my truck. Sorry, bud. That's all I got. I don't know if he belongs around here. He looks kind of like he uh, just lives outside the gas. He might be the owner's dog. You know, we're on uh, reserve land here. And very often they have dogs uh, roaming around on reserves. Uh, so they call them res dogs. For some, I don't know if that's like a bad term. If it is, I don't mean it that way. I just mean a dog that's on the reserve. They uh, uh, often you uh, go up into northern Manitoba too. They always have lots of like almost like whole packs of dogs just roaming around. Every single one. <laughs> so it looks like he's kind of. Here's the guard dog. I know, bud. I can't take you home. I can't take. You. I got enough. I got enough dogs, man. I can't have any more. Tempting though. You know the thing is, if I brought him home, my wife would completely understand. And she wouldn't say anything about it. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna lay down. No, no, don't do that to me. <gasps> okay, let's get out of here. Let's go pet him. Let's go pet him. Okay. Hi, buddy. Are you friendly? Here. Come here. Come here. I know I don't have any food. I just want to pet you. Is that okay? Is that okay? Can I come closer? No? Okay. Okay. Well, you come to me. You come to me. Come on. No? Yeah, he's definitely a outdoor dog. Probably just lives around here. Kind of cautious of people. Hey. Come on. No, no, you don't have to be scared of me. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. You sure? I just want to scratch your ears. I just want to scratch your ears. Is that okay? No? no? Okay. Okay. I'm not going to make you nervous. Doesn't want to be pet. I just want it to be friends. I just want it to be friends. I'm not going to force him to let me pet him. Tried. Have a good night, bud. So this is where we're gonna wrap it up. Oh, I guess I should put myself into off duty. Got all distracted by the dog. <laughs> oh. Put myself in the sleeper berth here, otherwise I'm gonna go over my hours right away. So here we are. Like I was saying earlier, 30 miles down the road into the mountains over there. That's where we're delivering this stuff. Should come off the truck pretty quick. And I'm meeting him there at 7 a.m. So I'm thinking we could get this off by 8, probably. Maybe 8.30, depending. I don't know. 9 o'clock at the latest, right? So by 9 o'clock, we'll turn around and we'll head back towards Calgary. Oh, my little buddy's walking away now. I want to take him home. Oh, well. This is his home. Well, I'm guessing he lives right around the casino here. Beautiful, beautiful country out here. Just... Look at that backdrop. You can smell the mountains. You know that, uh, those of you who have been up to British Columbia before, that, that mountain smell. It smells like timber. It smells like, you know, the forests in the mountains. All of BC has that smell. You know, you could blindfold me and airdrop me into the middle of BC anywhere. I'll take one breath. I'll be able to tell you I'm in British Columbia. It's just, it's a wonderful, glorious smell. It's, it's like fresh cut wood, you know? The whole province. <laughs> I love BC. They're, uh, they got some nutty regulations and laws going on there, coming down from the lower mainland over there. And the taxes are through the roof. It's very expensive. It's expensive just to live in Canada, right? To live in BC, 
Even the rich people say it's expensive. It's the expensive of the expensive. You pay for the scenery, you pay for oh, all the taxes they have going on there. Like I complained about the taxes we have on the prairies. Oh, the taxes in BC. My fellow BCers in the comments section, confirm what I'm saying here. BC is very expensive to live in. Uh, BC stands for bring cash. Bring lots of it. British Columbia, bring cash. That's too bad because I would, oh man. You know, maybe, this is the, the one thing I love about this job traveling around is that I get to see all these places and be reminded how beautiful the country is. And I want to take my family here. I want to take Brit and Theo here. I know they'd love to go. The problem is we're kind of tied down because we got dogs, right? We can't just travel with all the dogs and uh, we don't want to leave them behind. We want to bring them with us. They're part of the family. So many people will tell us, just leave them somewhere. Well, that could be an option. We might have to have someone come stay at our house, which we've thought of that. That's one of our options, stay at our house and take care of them. But, uh, you know, it'd, it'd be nice to take them with us. That's part of the reason why we've been looking into getting a Yukon XL, like a GMC Yukon XL eventually so that we can go on vacations, we can have a powerful enough vehicle to pull the camper. And also a big enough vehicle to fit us, our children, all of our children's stuff, plus our dogs, plus all of our dog stuff. All in one vehicle and just go cruising, right? It's, it's a dream I have. We'll see if I ever get to it. I mean, I'll just keep manifesting and just speak it into existence, right? The power of our words. Uh, words and frequencies are what make up this universe around us. It's, if, uh, Nikola Tesla, I believe, said, if you want to think of the universe, think of frequency and vibrations. That's all we are. We're all just frequency and vibrations. So you use your words, you use your talk, your, you, the way you talk, you use your frequencies and vibrations that come out of your mouth. And they they have more power than you think. I truly believe that. You, uh... I mean, I, I can keep telling myself I'm going to be a billionaire. I probably, maybe, maybe, maybe might happen. You never know. Never say never. I'll keep trying. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire, maybe a millionaire. I'll settle for millionaire, but maybe a billionaire. Just keep saying that. Again, it is. <laughs> I know it doesn't work that way, but, you know, realistic goals of having a bigger vehicle and being able to take my family on vacation, that's the Canadian dream. That's the American dream. It's this thing, like, just to be able to live a good life, have a little bit extra to take your family on vacations, go to Disney World, go see the British Columbia Mountains. If you guys live in the U.S., which a lot of you do, you live in the U.S. and you've not come up to Canada to see the uh, the Western Alberta Mountains or the British Columbia Mountains, the Rockies of Canada, Make put that on your bucket list of things you want to do in your life. Come visit British Columbia in Canada and the scenery, it, it'll blow you away. Like, don't just go down to Vancouver. Uh, we call it the Lower Mainland, the Bowl down there. Don't go to the big cities. Go to, like, Kamloops or Kelowna. Uh, go up to Prince George up north. Just, uh, or maybe, like, rent a car and just drive through BC from from BC, uh, from Vancouver to Calgary or something. Just drive through. Like, I, I've done that, thousands, like, hundreds, maybe thousands of times. Probably thousands of times. You won't be disappointed. You know, and tons of camping places, tons of outdoor hiking, outdoor activities, ski mountains, snowmobile trails, hiking trails, uh, like ATV trails. So many things to do in British Columbia. It is a beautiful place. Definitely worth going to visit. However, if you're thinking of moving there, like I said, it's uh, British Columbia, BC. Bring cash. <laughs> I like going to visit and then going back to my affordable Manitoba. <laughs> Uh, okay, everybody, I'm going to shut her down here. Thanks for watching me today. Please don't forget to subscribe. We're not done our trip yet. We went from Winnipeg down to Arizona to Colorado, up here to Alberta. From here, we go to Manitoba. We're going to pick up our load on Monday and go back home, and then we'll complete this rounder trip. So there's more to come yet. There's going to be a video tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Time. Hit the bell so you don't miss it. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you can hit that like button or leave me a comment down below. Those, those things do help me out a lot. And if you want to take it one step further, like I always say, you can go and hit that join now button. If you become a member, I think it's like five bucks a month or something, uh, like a couple of cups of coffee, like a cup of Starbucks a month. And uh, uh, you can get early access to all the videos up to a week early or a few days early. Uh, you get first dibs on all the videos if you uh, really like what I'm doing. And if that's not for you, totally understandable. Uh, a thumbs up and a comment is great. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Take care. Keep your stick on the ice. Pay attention out there. And use your turn signals.